Hi and welcome to this short video lecture where we will be solving an example examination problem from heat transfer. I'll go ahead and read this problem. This is a convection problem. Um, it says air flows at a bulk temperature of T infinity equals 290 Kelvin over a flat plate that is uniform in temperature at a surface temperature of 400 Kelvin and has a free stream velocity of 20 meters per second. The plate is half a meter wide and 10 meters long. At a distance of one meter down the plate, there is an obstruction that ensures that the flow downstream is all turbulent. And we need to estimate the total heat loss from the plate here. So we're given the thermal properties below. So this is a convection problem. And our procedure, we need to get Q. We want to get the total heat loss from the plate, so we're going to want to find an average heat transfer coefficient, the total surface area of the plate, and then we're going to use the plate surface temperature minus the bulk fluid temperature. So first we're going to need to find H, where H is going to be a function of our Neusselt number. And our Neusselt number is going to be a function of our Reynolds number and our Prandtl number. So our Prandtl number is given here. So first, we need to find what our Reynolds number is. So Reynolds number is a function of x in this case. So our Reynolds number actually changes with distance down the plate. So that means our fluid flow might change as we go from the leading edge of the plate down to the end our fluid might change dramatically in terms of its characteristics and specifically I'm referring to if it's laminar flow or turbulent flow that has a big impact on the heat transfer relationship that we have. So we need to find the right correlation based on what our Reynolds number is. So first let's look at what our Reynolds number is at L. So at L equals 10 meters our Reynolds number is going to be rho times our velocity times our plate length divided by mu. So we have all of those terms in here, and I'm going to skip the plugging and chugging. We have everything available here, and also here and here. So the Reynolds number at the end of the plate is 1.09 times 10 to the seventh. And you can verify this on your own by taking these numbers and plugging them in. So this is definitely turbulent flow by the time it gets to the end of the plate, just judging by Reynolds number. And our critical Reynolds number for flow over a flat plate in this particular circumstance is 5 times 10 to the fifth. So any Reynolds numbers above 5 times 10 to the fifth means the flow has gone turbulent. So typically when the flow first hits that leading edge, it's laminar. And then for sure, by the time your Reynolds number exceeds 5 times 10 to the fifth, your boundary layer, so we start out like this, the flow goes turbulent. And this Reynolds number is a good indication of when your flow has gone turbulent. So a lot of the correlations use that as a standard. So this problem is a little bit interesting. So normally that flow would transition from laminar to turbulent at whatever x um, corresponds to this critical Reynolds number. So typically, um, when you reach that Reynolds number at a distance of x down the plate, then you would need to use a different heat transfer correlation. This problem is interesting because we have this obstruction here that is going to guarantee that it's turbulent from this point down. So we know for sure that it will be turbulent because the problem tells us that we have this obstruction that trips the flow and starts to induce eddies and now our flow is going to be turbulent from here on out. So our next step will be to evaluate the Reynolds number here at that point. So our Reynolds number at x at the obstruction is going to be rho times our u infinity evaluated the, at that x, I'm going to call that x trip, divided by mu. So our Reynolds number, actually we've just replaced L of 10 meters with x of 1 meter, so our Reynolds number is 1.09 times 10 times
times 10 to the 6th, which is still turbulent. So basically what our Reynolds number is telling us is that even if this obstruction weren't here, our flow is already turbulent at that point. So that obstruction doesn't really do much to change the fluid flow characteristics. Our flow has gone turbulent somewhere here when our Reynolds number is at 5 times 10 to the fifth. So that happens earlier than that obstruction. So the next step, so we're looking at our Reynolds number. We know that we definitely go turbulent in this particular problem. But we have to assume that the flow starts out laminar as, that, as the flow encounters that leading edge of our plate. So our next step is going to be to go and evaluate or go find the right correlation to get our new salt number. So I'm going to go to the cheat sheet for the class. We have these new salt number correlations all grouped by different flow and fluid characteristics here and, and heat transfer characteristics. So we want a flat plate. So this one is a flat plate for laminar flow when our Reynolds number is less than 5 times 10 to the fifth and when the plate is isothermal. So we know that our flow is partially laminar, but it's also partially turbulent. So this relationship, we could use this to evaluate the first part of the plate, but it wouldn't be valid after the flow switches to turbulent. So let's keep looking at different correlations. So here, this is flat plate laminar flow again, but this is when you have a constant surface heat flux. That is not the case for us. We have an isothermal plate. Okay, so here's another correlation. So we have a, a flat plate with turbulent flow and it's isothermal. So this correlation would be good for the turbulent part of the plate. So we could use a combination of these two correlations, the laminar plate and the turbulent plate, and evaluate the total heat loss over the laminar region here, and then the total heat loss over the turbulent region here, knowing that the the flow goes turbulent at whatever x corresponds to this Reynolds number. So that could be one approach to take. But because we've studied really hard for heat transfer, we know that there's another correlation. So this is a flat plate with mixed conditions. So this accounts for both laminar and turbulent flow. So this relationship is effectively a combination of these two different relationships where the, this has been integrated from 0 to the critical Reynolds number and this one has been integrated from the critical Reynolds number to the end of the plate. So this correlation here is actually a combination of these two. And we, this A term lets us account for this mixed condition. So we need to evaluate this A term. So we can evaluate the A term here. So in this case, because our obstruction happens after the flow has already been transitioned to turbulent, that obstruction, the Reynolds number at that obstruction is not really meaningful in this problem. Here we would just use the critical Reynolds number of 5 times 10 to the fifth. And we'd use that same critical Reynolds number here, 5 times 10 to the fifth. So once we do that, we end up with an A value of 871. We plug in that A into here, and this is our correlation. So Remember, these correlations are derived, for the most part, they're derived experimentally, and that sometimes this correlation isn't particularly meaningful, other than we know that it, we can use this relationship with the known fluid flow characteristics, the Reynolds number and the Prandtl number, to get a new salt number, which we can then use to get our convective heat transfer coefficient. So I'm going to go ahead and use A is equal to 871. Again, that is because it's just the Reynolds number itself that tells us when the flow has transitioned from laminar to turbulent, and that happens before this obstruction. So really, the obstruction is sort of just a red herring in this particular problem. It doesn't really affect which correlation we would use or how we would use that correlation. If, however, the obstruction occurred here, then that would become our critical Reynolds number. Even if it's not 5 times 10 to the fifth yet, we would use that smaller Reynolds number to determine this transition point here. So we'd use a smaller number here, and that smaller number would be the Reynolds number evaluated at the obstruction. Again, in this particular problem, the, re the flow transitions to turbulent before the obstruction, so we just use our standard critical Reynolds number of 5 times 10 to the fifth in the problem. 
So it's a lot of wordy explanation, so let's get to actually solving this problem now. And one thing I wanted to point out was that um, these relationships, you can get a local Neusselt number, which does not have the bar over it, or you can get an average Neusselt number. So we want the average Neusselt number because we're asked to find the total heat loss over the entire plate. So we wanted to get average Neusselt number, which will lead us to our average um, convection heat transfer coefficient, and we'd plug this in here to get the total heat transfer heat loss for the whole plate. So we will use this relationship, our average Neusselt number over the full length of the plate is equal to that relationship that I just showed, which is 0 0.037 times our Reynolds number at the end of the plate to the 4 fifths power minus A where our A is 871 that we calculated before, times our Prandtl number to the 1 third. So we've already calculated our Reynolds number at the end of the plate, 1.09 times 10 to the 7th. Our Prandtl number is given to us here, it's 0 0.707. So I'll spare the plugging and chugging, but if you're working on this on your own, you can use this to check our Neusselt number ends up being 1,347. So 1,347 is our new salt number. We also use this definition of the new salt number, which is the new salt number is HL over K. So we rearrange that equation and we get that our average heat transfer coefficient is our new salt number that we just calculated times sorry, times K, the thermal conductivity of the air, divided by the length of our plate. And when we plug and chug, we get that our average heat transfer coefficient is 34.8 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Now we plug this in and we get our Q is equal to H bar times A times the plate surface temperature minus T infinity, which is 34.8 watts per meter squared per Kelvin times our plate, which is 0 0.5 meters by 10 meters times our temperatures, which I believe was 400. 400 Kelvin minus 290 Kelvin. And we get a final answer here of 19,161 watts, which is 19.16 kilowatts. And that is the answer to our problem.